Hello everyone, my name is Troy and welcome to another homebrew update. We have some great, great news for you. Um, originally I was actually going to make a video last week, but then I got busy hanging out with a friend and all the other Christmas stuff. So I decided just to hold off all last week's stuff, which is really like three small things anyway. And I'm putting it into this week's video. But this week guys, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about going on with the PS4, the Nintendo Switch, the 3DS, and I think we have one thing on the PS Vita as well. So with all that guys said, let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to do things a little bit differently here. I'm going to actually start with all the small stuff first and then go on to the bigger things. Unlike all the other past weeks where I just kind of did it by category of Nintendo, PlayStation, and then I did um, Xbox or whatever other stuff I had in there. So yeah, this time I'm actually going to be starting with the smaller stuff and going to the big new stuff. Alright guys, let's get started. To start it off, we have uh, some 3DS homebrews, some updates mainly, such as Luma 3DS, the popular custom firmware. Luma has been updated to version 9.0. This one really just offers better screenshots, so it's able to do screenshots faster, which is great because I remember the last version taking quite a while, and also the screenshots for Game Boy Advance games, I think it was, they were inverted colors, they didn't do it correctly, now that is fixed. You can now take good screenshots of your Game Boy Advance games, if it was Game Boy Advance or Game Boy, I cannot remember. Either way, it's fixed. Next up, we have a new update for the popular homebrew FBI for the 3DS. This has been updated to version 2.6.14. And the main thing this offers is that you can actually now view title DB info. So I'm guessing you can view probably when it was created and what maybe what games is for. I'm not really too sure. I have actually took a look at it myself. But it also fixes some bug fixes here and there. And it gives you more sorting options. So you can actually sort through different things a different way. Again, I haven't actually taken the time to look too much into this. I'm just kind of telling you because there was a new update for it. We got the last 3DS homebrew to talk about and that is Boot NTR. Essentially Boot NTR is just the application to run NTR custom firmware from Luma. And it's just been updated to actually run on Luma version 9.0 now. That, that's really it. That's the only thing that's been added to it. So yeah, if you are now on Luma 3DS 9.0, and you use NTR firmware, you will need to make sure you get this Boots NTR update for it so it works properly. Now, let's start talking about some of the newer homebrew, such as the new one on the PS Vita. It is called re -P -D -R -M. I think that's the name. Let me look at that real quick. Yes, that is the name, re -P -D -R -M. Essentially, what it lets you do is access the PS Store as well as activate your PS Vita again. So, for all the people who are on 3.60 firmware on your PS Vita and you didn't have a way to access it because you know maybe you're afraid of connecting to the PS store or you know you just couldn't because you know it wasn't activated well now you can um, a user I can't remember his name I'll put his name somewhere on the screen somewhere here but yeah that user actually created a little plugin so that you can now activate your PS Vita once again meaning you can play your PSP games and you can also access the PlayStation Store I would highly recommend though not to access the PlayStation Store on an account you use a lot. The reason why I say that is because you don't want to get banned. I mean, think about it. If you have like a main account that has already PSN purchases on it and you use it on a PS3 or you use it on a PS4, if you log into that account on PSN on say a hack console, you are more than likely able to get banned and I don't want to see that because then there was a lot of money possibly. So guys, please use a throwaway account. That's what I do on all my consoles. I just don't want to feel the risk of getting banned. One thing I forgot to mention about re -P -D -R -M is that it still will not let you play games that require firmware 3.61 or above. Unfortunately, that's still not a thing, but maybe in the future it is, I don't know. Over on the PlayStation 4 side, we have some great news. The PS4 exploit has finally been released. Now, it is only for version 4.05, but 
it does have complete kernel access. It has been tested a little bit. It doesn't actually freeze or anything like that. The WebKit exploit, which is how you run it, essentially runs through the web browser. The WebKit exploit runs 95% of the time, so you will definitely not be seeing any crashes or freezes and things like that whenever you use it. The downside of this is that there's not much use for this for the end user as of yet. It's mainly meant for developmental use. There's no backup loaders, there's no actual homebrew games or anything like that that you can actually use. So for myself, I'm actually going to be sticking to the 3.55 firmware I'm on right now and wait until more stuff comes out on the 4.05 exploit firmware so that, you know, I could just be like, okay, maybe that is actually something I finally want to do. Right now, I feel like there's nothing, there's no reason to update to 4.05 for myself. If you guys want to go for it, go for it. Just please do it correctly and don't do it through the online way, you know, because they'll automatically detect the highest firmware you can download and it'll do it that way. You'll have to update your PS4 through an actual flash drive with the firmware file on it. So please just make sure you do update your PS4 the correct way. Over the last couple of days, the 34C3 conference has actually been done. That conference is all about hacking different things and security measures and things like that. And the popular Switch hackers, Pluto and his other friends, I don't know the names right off the moment, they actually had a little panel there talking about the Switch and about the security measures of how they were able to defeat everything. Yes, they even got kernel level access. Um, at the very ending, they actually did show a little neat homebrew that they ran on it. So homebrew is definitely possible, which, I mean, that's not really too big a news. We've kind of known that in the past couple months anyway. But the bigger news is there's going to be a homebrew launcher coming. We do not know when the homebrew launcher will be actually coming, but that's great news because it will make it easier for other people to run homebrew instead of running different lines of code just to run one little homebrew thing on the switch so that is great news i am very excited for it and i'm really excited to see what the switch brings in for 2018 well guys that is it for this week's homebrew update thank you so much for watching but before i finish this video of course i am going to answer the question i asked you all guys last week that question was what game have i put the most hours into for me, this was actually a tough decision to try and figure out because I thought of Pokemon. Now, someone else actually put this in the comments last week, and that's the reason why I thought of it. So, congrats to you, guy. But for me, I actually decided to go with my all-time favorite game. Well, I should say all-time favorite game I played online, Ratchet Deadlock. Now, with this game, I play the single player, I play the multiplayer, and all of that. But the most part I put the time into was actually probably finding cheats for the multiplayer. I was one of the three people to actually run cheats online on Ratchet Deadlock. I was the guy who found Rapid Fire for any of you who played Ratchet Deadlock online. So, yes. It was really fun to find those cheats and honestly those cheats is what made me want to find more cheats in other games such as like Hatsune Miku for the PS3 or PS Vita because I have actually been looked into that a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. So anyway guys, let me leave you a question for next week. My question is, what are your New Year's resolutions? You know, nothing game related. I'm just kind of curious and you know, just like this time, I will answer this question in the next video. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I think that was like the third time I said that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Fourth time. If you do like this video, please hit that subscribe button as well as a little bell icon so that way you get notifications every single time I upload a video. And have a great new year.